Hello, I'm Ahmed Chalili and this is Please Tell Me a Story, a game where storytelling goes wrong. It's the penultimate episode of the season and I'm joined by Felicity Ward, Nabil Abdul Rashid, Helen Bauer, Megan Jane Crabb and Mark Thomas. Hi gang. Hi. Hi. So, you guys know how it goes, if not, allow me to explain. Each week one of us tells a story, then we tell that story to each other again, again and again, all from memory. <laughs> what can go wrong? <laughs> I like you a lot, but it doesn't I know. feel like a whole story. <laughs> <laughs> I can already tell from your voice that you know something's gone seriously wrong. Didn't you say Mark was a young boy? I feel like you're nitpicking, and you should just go with it. This week, my mate Mark Thomas is at the Big Blue Storytelling Chair. Mark, if you were to describe this story in three words, what would those three words be? First Belfast gig. Oh. Fantastic. OK. Got it. So remember, if you're listening to the show, you can also watch us by searching for Please Tell Me a Story on YouTube. Mark, uh, the first to hear your tale is Helen Bauer. I sense some payback is on your way. <laughs> uh, I'll be back in the end. I can't wait to hear how the story goes. Until then, the rest of us need to get the hell out of here. So all of you get up and get out. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Please tell me a story. Mark takes his place in the chair and Helen sits opposite to hear his story first. Mark, please tell us the story. Helen, this is my story. <laughs> The story takes place in the late 80s. I had been performing for a few years and um, I got my first ever gig in Belfast. Mm -hmm. And uh, things were lively out there. And my mum was like, Mark, listen, you know what you're like, just keep your mouth shut. All right? <laughs> Don't say anything, it'll upset them. They'll only fucking blow you up, love. Right? <laughs> so that was my mum, right? Amazing. So we've got over to, to Belfast, and I went yeah. over with uh, two lovely blokes called, uh, the collective name was Skint Video, who are a musical group, which Steve... Skin Video? Skint Video. Skint, okay. Right? And Steve Gribbin, yeah. who you know, yeah. uh, he was half of Skint Video. Right? And Dark. they were really lovely blokes because okay. I just started to tour outside of London. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. were like, come with us, young boy. We shall take you under our wings. Oh, and they that. looked after me. So we got over to Belfast for the first time. We're going mm. flying out from, from Heathrow. And um, we're, it, uh, it is the late 80s. So we're walking through Heathrow and they've got mandolins and, you know, <laughs> guitars and banjolelis and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and we're walking through. One of the special branch people just goes, all right, where are you, where are you going? Where are you going? They have a special branch as you walk through the car, I go, where are you going? They said, we're going to Belfast, which is kind of obvious because you're here. Yeah. And uh, he said, so what would what, what, you do? Where are you going? And he said, we're going to perform a gig. And he said, what would you, you do? And Steve just went, he's a comic. And he said, and what about you two? And they said, we're musicians. And he said, oh, yeah. What's that? And Steve, it's Brian, right? He goes, it's a mandolin. And he goes, what kind of songs do you sing? They said, folk songs. Yeah. And he said, what kind of folk songs? And he's angling for you, are, oh are you Fenians, right? Fenians? Fenians, Catholics. Oh, right, right? yeah, of course. Are, are you are, are you Fenians? And, and Steve just went, we're good ones. So we were let through, right? Fucking we're let through. Okay. So we get through. This is what happened, right? This is the story, right? The day before we were doing these gigs, because Brian had set up, Brian and Steve had set up new people, yeah, and they yeah, set up yeah. some gigs there. And one of the gigs was in a pub called the Paradiso, and it was in right, the, the Ormar Road, right? And it's the, it's a nationalist bar. Okay. okay? It's quite lively because what happened was loads of, because Brian and Steve know loads of people out there. So we've got, uh -huh. we got Sean and John and Desi and all this lot who are coming over. Sean, John and Desi. Yeah, yeah. All okay. These, all, all the these, gang. Yeah, yeah. Coming over. And uh, they all worked at Ratner's, right? The old jewellery store, right? <laughs> now, the point <laughs> being is they were, uh, sorry, this is nice verse. But the thing is, <laughs> so Desi's there, you go, you're right there, Brian, you're right there, Steve, you know, he's going all of that. That night they had in, um, the stickies came in. Now, the stickies are important. They're significant. The stickies are the Marxist IRA from a place called the Markets, which is an estate which was designed as like a horseshoe, shoe, but it comes. there's only one way in, in and one way out. Do you okay. know what I mean? So it's one of those places. The stickies are the Marxist 
IRA from the from the market from the markets. From the markets. Right, the Marxist the estate. IRA from the markets, which is the shape of a horseshoe. Yeah, we are almost in Danny Kay territory. I don't the know. The Marxists who that is. from the markets are the stickies <laughs> with the pickies. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. The stickies hate the Britties and the Britties hate the stickies. So that's roughly how it goes. Right. So these guys are coming and they're a little bit leery. And yeah. the gig so it's in a pub, right? Yeah. And the gig starts. Well, in fact, before it started, they started having a go at people. Yeah. Because they, they knew Desi. And they Desi, Desi. And he goes, I haven't seen, I remember you going round. I remember going round and your ma made the biggest chips. She made these enormous chips. They were like doorsteps. And I, 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 I completely got over my head. But Brian's like, oh, mate, this is really, he's insulting his mum's chips. So this is really big. Do you know wow, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, the, call it, I, in all your mama stories, I've never heard your mama make shit chips, right? <laughs> so this is serious, right? <laughs> so what's happened is, uh, so the, there's a bit of tension in the air, mm -hmm. right? We do the gig and all the guys from the market are, are shouting, I'm trying to do the gig and, 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 we get through it, and it and Brian and Steve absolutely storm it, and it's a fantastic night. Everyone's singing and joining in and shouting at the end of it. Okay. And at the end of it all, we have a lock-in. So the lock-in is taking place. Okay. It's heading into sort of 2 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I'm enjoying it. People are just chatting away and all of that. And this large guy comes up to me, and he's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and it, he's got a stutter and he's got an accent. And he goes, get a fucking get a comment, mate, and starts to physically lift me up. You? Why are you? Yeah. Well, he just picked on me. Oh. He goes, fucking comment. You'll find out in the street. Just go, brother. And he takes me out into this corridor, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he goes, just come with me, and takes me outside, and outside is a taxi waiting. And he goes, get in the car, get in the, just, just get in the car, and puts me in the car. Right, so I'm now in a car in West Belfast on my first night in Belfast. Right, this stranger at two o'clock in the morning has put me in a car, and I'm sitting there talking to the cabbie, going, "It's a return trip. It's a return trip. It's a return trip." Through my mind, it's kind of like flashing the headlines: young comic, future all ahead of him, <laughs> loses, you know. <laughs> and so we go, we go out into West Belfast. It's dark, yeah. no what, no lights on in the streets, and we get to this place, and it takes about twenty minutes to get there, right? I mean, there's, it's a sort of suburban street, but there's no lights on anywhere. And this guy goes, and man handles me out of the car, right, pushes me through the front garden gate, up the path, right, gets to the door, and no lights on in the house, opens the door, pushes me in, oh right, and, and I'm just absolutely terrified, yeah. right? And he just turns the lights on. There's a massive bookshelf in front of us. He picks a book up and goes, present, and then puts me back in the car. Car. We drive all the way back into the pub. Oh my god! Right, and I get there, and I, I, I walk in, and Brian and all these Brian and Steve are there with all their mates, and they're like, "Where have you been? We thought the young English boy had been kidnapped or something. We were wondering you'd come back without your kneecaps." <gasps> so I've come back, and they said, and the barman was, like, "Brendy, what did you do? Why have you taken the wee Englishman? What did you do, Brendy?" And Brendy, who is the big guy. Right, stands up there and just goes, uh, he said, where did you do that? I said, he got me a present and I'm still shaking. And he said, what did you give him? And I put the book on the bar for the first okay. time I've looked at it and it's a Christy Moore songbook. Right, and I put the book on the bar. He's a very famous Irish folk singer. Okay, Christy Moore songbook. And he just he, he somebody picks up the book and it just starts. I wish I was in Carrick Fergus and starts singing. Right, and it's beautiful, beautiful. Wow. And at one point, everyone's taking turns with the book, and they're all saying, "Get the heads out, rattle your granny's bin." That's the way to let the boys. The army's coming in. So he's singing all this stuff. Everyone's checking. singing, and then uh, the, one of the markets guys goes, "There's Hey, Desi, come and sing us the song you sang at your ma's wedding. Right? Which is quite the insult. Yeah. And Desi walks up and this guy gives him the book and Desi goes, I don't need this book. These songs are written on my heart. And he just starts, and he just, As I was walking the Glenship Pass, I heard a young maiden mourn. The boy from Tamladuff, she cried, is ten years dead gone. But oh, my heart, it tears apart this young man to lose. We'll never see the likes again of Francis Hughes.
We have a fantastic night. Next morning, some point in the morning, I wake up and I turn on the news and there's been a bomb in London. And I phone my mum up and go, what have you said? <laughs> and is that exactly how it was? Yeah. That the... is exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's all just gone. There were so many names. I look forward to hearing how those lovely Irish folk songs sound. In comes Megan to hear Helen's retelling. I'm just going to level with you up top. I, I went into a daydream, so you're going to get what the best version of this I can. Fantastic. Mark is a young comic in the late 80s. He has been gigging for a little bit and he starts to get gigs outside of London. He gets offered a gig in Belfast. And it's like, oh my God, I'm getting on a plane. Ah, I can't believe it's happening. Cute. So he, and he's on a plane and he's with his mates. Like these two guys, they're in a duo together. They're called the um, Chippy Mandolin Guitar Boys. Oh, that doesn't sound that like a... That felt right for me to say it That doesn't sound like a true the thing. The Chippy Mandolin Guitar Boys. And they're it doesn't sound like a true thing part. because oh, it's not part. a true they thing. Remember. This is when the daydreaming started. I won't lie to you. There's... Okay, so what you need to know mm-hmm. is there's a group of Marxist IRA who live in a horseshoe. Mm-hmm. No. Mm. In something in the shape of a horseshoe, a house the shape of a horseshoe, and they eat, they all eat chips. <laughs> something like that. Okay, oh, okay, so there's there's chips and there's a horseshoe yes. and there's Marxist IRA people. Okay. And I think a gig happens at some point. Oh, and there's someone from Glasgow there who's like, I'm from fucking Glasgow. I'm yeah. I can do better um, than I, that. I, I like you a lot, but it doesn't I know. feel like a whole story. <laughs> it's a bit fragmented. He did a lot of tangents. I'm going to level with you. It's a Glaswegian. There, there we go. Nailed it. Um, but they're in Northern Ireland. And um, in Northern Ireland, um, they go to a pub, which is, it begins with P. I'm just going to say the pee pub. And they go into the pee pub and, um, oh, God, there's stuff happening in there. Bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody, there's, oh, the chippy gang, the guitar and mandolin player. And um, bloody hell, Mark's just chilling out, right? The daydream continues. Mark gets taken on his wild taxi ride and we're back in the pub. And then he gets the book out because he hasn't even looked at it because he's so nervous. And it's um, songs by... Carol Martin. Carol, Carol Martin. Not Carol King. I think it was a Carol or a Carol. Cheryl. A famous Cheryl Irish Cole? folk singer. Oh, no. No, um, that'd be amazing. Fight for this last <laughs> That famous like late Cheryl 80s Cole. hair. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't easy. Um, and then um, people start singing some songs. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. And then someone else starts singing another Irish song. Um, Say lovey, hey boy, sitting in the tree. I'm going to come for tea, don't be shy. Screaming, look, I come down for your tree house in the sky. I know, just what to do. Is in my dream with a room for two. I got a house with the windows and doors. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Gotta let me in. Hey, hey, hey. And they're all singing that. And then um, they're like, oh, my God. Um, oh, there's a guy called Desi there. And they're like, Desi, you should sing a song. And he's like, I don't need no song, book. I know the songs. And then he starts he starts to sing another, another Irish song, which goes, <clears throat> um, blame it on the weatherman standing on the shore, calling out your name. I was there before. And the whole pub's like, oh my God, we fucking love Bewitched. What happened to them? Um, and this is in the 80s. Late 80s, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're all like um, singing. And then um, the next morning, bloody hell, um, Mark wakes up and he sees, he sees on the news there's been a bomb in London. And he calls up his mum and went, what did you say? <sighs> Lovely, eh? And that, that <laughs> is exactly how it went with a couple of song alterations. I'll put my hands up to that. I was digging the playlist. Oh, Raglan Road. Was one of them Raglan Road? <laughs> On Raglan Road. 
I think it was a bit more than a couple of song alterations, but thanks to Helen nonetheless. Megan takes her place in the story chair and in comes Nabil. Megan, please tell me a story. I would love to, Nabil. This is Mark's story, told to Helen, who told me. Buckle up. We're in Ireland. Mark is but a small lad who wants to have a career in comedy. Wait, Mark's Irish? Um, yeah. Mm, I'm not sure, but we're in Ireland. Fair or enough. We, or maybe we're going... Uh, yeah, let's go with that. We're in Ireland. Mark wants to be a comedian. He gets on a plane to Scotland to have his first gig. There's a twins next to him. He likes them. Irrelevant detail. He gets to Scotland and his mum calls him and says, no, no, no. The troubles didn't happen in Scotland, did they? The troubles happened in Ireland. Rewind, we're in Scotland. Mark wants to be a comedian. He goes to Ireland. His mum calls him up and says, you want to watch out because there's all these troubles going on in Ireland. And Mark's Mark gets to the passport control and he's being harassed and people want to find out if he's a Catholic. Big drama. Uh, He gets away, gets to Ireland. And then he goes to a pub where I want to say, (sighs) bewitched were there. Um, (laughs) And Cheryl Cole was also there. And they were all having a nice sing-along. Wait. Didn't you say Mark was a young boy? Young in spirit. Because if Cheryl Cole was there at the height of her career, Mark... I feel like you're nitpicking and you should just go with it. They're all having a nice sing-along and at one point, Bewitched get up and they say... Who wants to sing this song with us? And Mark, a lifelong bewitched... (laughs) uh, A lifelong bewitched fan, storms the stage and they all sing... um, Hey boy, sitting in a tree, is there an instrument for me? I got a house with the windows and doors, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. You know that one? You want to sing it with me? No, I think it's for the best that I do not attempt to do that. Okay, but that's a very important detail of the story. So, just so you know that. And they sing that, and they sing a couple of other Irish classics, like, Oh, Danny boy, something's coming. And they all have a gay old time, and then a bomb happens somewhere. The bomb just happens. Somewhere. Right. Somewhere, but I want to say it's not on the pub, it's, like, somewhere else. Um... And Mark calls up his mum and, and says, are you all right? And she says, told you so. And then Mark does his gig and it goes really well. And I'm not going to lie to you, Nabil, that is all I remember. I was not working with a strong, um, a strong batch of material there from Helen. Right. And that's exactly how it goes. <laughs> <sighs> I'm so sorry. I did enjoy that new version of Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy, something's coming. Nabil didn't sound too happy with the story, so let's see what happens when he tells it to Felicity. Let's have a drink. All right, Nabil, you ready to break this story, baby? I've basically got uh, bones. No no meat. And it's not like bones that match each other. I've got like a femur, a skull. A metatarsal. Yeah. <laughs> so this story starts when Mark was a wee lad in Scotland and wanted to go to Ireland, not to Belfast, to do comedy, t- to start off his career, even though there's a perfectly feasible flipping festival for comedy in Edinburgh. Thriving. Yeah. Um, so he, he travels. Um, the, the, again, there's some discrepancy about locations. He travels and time. He travels... And when he gets, no, before he even leaves, uh, he arrives, sorry. Strong start, very strong start. He arrives in Belfast 
And um, that's when there was trouble in 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 in, in um, Belfast. Yes, strong and, start um, indeed. You know, this story past, has been on a real Irish roller coaster. So let's get to Bewitched. Bewitched were there with Cheryl Cole. Now, again, Cheryl Cole was in Bewitched. The, look in, in this look, story. This is what I was told, and um, time and space have warped somehow because. When Cheryl Cole was singing, I'm pretty sure Mark was not a little boy. No. Right. And Even Bewitched was the late 80s, 90s. Yeah. Okay. And they were singing that, hey, boy, something, something. <laughs> Come over here, show me mine, I'll show you yours. I don't know because I don't listen to whack shit. Um, so they were like, oh. How dare you? Will Nabil's enthusiasm for the story carry until the end? That's exactly... <laughs> I mean, I guess... Uh, fuck, I don't know. I I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, no worries. Like, I don't even... There was no stand-up in the story. He went to do stand-up and wound up in a pub where a group that shouldn't even have existed at the time mm-hmm. was playing. Mm-hmm. And then there was a mom. Okay. Hey, I, I'm not here to shoot the messenger. I'm just here to receive the message. Now in comes Omid to hear the story for the first time. Felicity, please tell me a story. Well, Omid, this is Mark's story told by Helen, who told Megan, who told Nabil, who told me. And the disclaimer I got from Nabil was, this has no meat, it's just the bones of the story and they're not even bones from the same part of the body. So this is, this is like someone's first draft bullet point when they don't actually know which story they're going to tell. So uh, Mark grew up in Scotland and he said, I want to be a, a stand-up comedian. Now, apparently this was the, the time of the Troubles and he, I'm not going to keep doing that. What because Irish folk know, legends are playing at the pub tonight? They were playing and then someone else was there. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. But they, they said, we're going to sing some songs. And so they got up on stage and they sung a mix of bewitched songs and Irish folk songs. And the Irish folk song that I got quoted was, what shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? That is a sea shanty. I don't think it's an Irish folk song. Okay. And then a bomb went off. And I don't know if it was outside the pub or inside the pub. And we, no mention of Mark doing stand-up, the end. Wow, that's mm-hmm. the end of the story. Mm. And that is exactly word for word how it goes. My it, it, in, initial reaction is that all of that is wrong. I agree with you. That's all I can give you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nabil had sadness in his eyes when he told me the story. Wow. Despair, I would say. All right. Omid's hunch is pretty bang on, I'd say. In comes Mark to hear what's happened to his story. All right, I'm ready. Here we go. Omid, please tell me my story. I can already (laughs) tell from your voice that you know something's gone seriously (laughs) wrong. Um... Uh, knowing you, I even said at the end, this is this has got to be completely wrong. You were raised in Edinburgh, in Scotland. <laughs> and you decide on a Scottish accent, I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. And even though there's a festival in your hometown every year, you decide I've got to go to Belfast because that's where the comedy scene is. During the Troubles! <laughs> so you go there as a young stand-up comedian to Belfast. It's in the middle of it's in, it's the 1980s sometime. And you're in a hotel and you get a phone call. You get a phone call from your mother who says, be very careful because it's during the Troubles and there are bombs going off, so be very careful. So you go to the place where the gig is and there's a band on called Bewitched. There's a, a young which I, I can't remember them being in the 1980s. I've, I've heard the name, but Bewitched are on. And you're waiting to go on. And Bewitched come up with um, what the, what was told to me that it was a, an Irish song, 
like an Irish drinking song or an IRA song, but the song that was sung back to me is What Should We Do With The Drunken Sailor, which we understand is some kind of sea shanty. A, a slash rebel song. Slash rebel song, possibly. And while they're singing this, a bomb goes off, okay? So you don't even get to gig. A bomb goes up. There are body parts flying everywhere. And you, sadly, didn't get to do your gig in Belfast. And that is how the story goes. Yes. That is what I've been told. <laughs> now, I know that's got to be wrong. <laughs> because, first of all, a stand-up comedian of your eminence would not ever tell... Would That wouldn't be a story that you would bring to this platform. I mean, let's start with the fact that Edinburgh, I was born in fucking Edinburgh. Yes, exactly. And let's start there as a... The second... The, 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 I mean, all of it's unfucking believable It's unbelievable. I can't wait for the story because if it's a Mark Thomas story in Belfast, it must be a cracking story. Unfucking believable Mark gets ready to read the Riot Act. Mark, please tell us your story. I would like to say that I'm disappointed in you. Oh. But you haven't surprised me at all. <gasps> <gasps> First of all, do I sound like I was born in fucking Edinburgh? <laughs> <laughs> Who? That, okay. Who put Edinburgh in? Where the fuck does that come from? Someone say. I was born in St Thomas's Hospital in South London, opposite Parliament. I was not born in Ed. You said Edinburgh. What the fuck is the matter they with you? They said you were a little boy in Scotland. I was a little boy in Scotland. Nothing. No one mentions a little boy in Scotland. What the fuck is that supposed to be? I've never heard anyone so angry about being Scottish before. <laughs> I'm not good at geography. <laughs> I'm not even Scottish and I'm offended for you, man. Wow. Hi, pal. And the stickies are the Marxist end of the IRA. Right, OK. Right. Oh, I see how you drifted off. I just, yeah. <laughs> I, just I went did there. not drift Sorry. off. That's <laughs> mad. Where did that... I didn't... They lived in a horseshoe, I remember. They did live in a horseshoe. Thank the you. estate is in a horseshoe. I okay. did call them the chippies, but that's You called them the fault. chippies. <laughs> OK. Lost. By the way... Where the fuck are bewitched in this story? <laughs> bewitched are nowhere to be... Did you bewitch this? I heard three Irish songs and I had to do my best. I did right. my best! And that... Your best is very bad. Yeah, I know, but I still tried. It's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no, so this I is meant serious. that in a derogatory way. No, but this the thing is, is, you think you're going to get kneecap. Desi, sing us the song you sang at your ma's wedding. And they get Desi up, which again is an insult. Was it? Right. Uh, with a, was the song about chips? No. OK. The song goes like this. But oh my heart, it tears apart This young man to lose We never see the likes again Of Francis Hughes It does sound like Blame It On The Weather Man, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so, oh, sorry. You thought that was bewitched? <laughs> uh -uh. No. <laughs> That's You've what that needed. managed to confuse that. I'm sorry, Ma. Well, to be honest, to be fair to Helen, I know I there, the there are some Iranian bands who start singing um, S Club 7 songs. Really? And they get confused. They go, don't stop, never give up, hold your head high and reach the top, the creamiest milk, the lightest bar, the goodness that's in Milky Bar. Famously. So that can happen. Yeah, I'm just it supporting can. It. Can I just say, Helen... I also sang Can Danny I just Boy. Sort of say, yeah, if sorry. at any point you're in an argument yeah. and Ahmed backs you up, just say, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> a remarkable story there from Mark Thomas. Thank you very much. Always value for money. And the moral of the story is, don't piss off Helen Bauer because she will butcher, butcher your story if you tell her first. Join us for the final episode next time where <laughs> Felicity <laughs> tells us a story about her time as a counsellor at Camp America. <gasps> Goodbye! Please tell